New Haven style pizza or a Beats is quickly becoming one of my all time favorite styles of pizza. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make a tomato pie like how they do up in New Haven, Connecticut. Welcome to Cooking with Chef Tuan. And as usual, all the ingredients will be linked in the description box down below. Now what makes a Beats different from a lot of other pizzas is it is a high hydration percentage pizza dough. Today I'm gonna to be showing you a method called auto lease. It just sounds more complicated than it really is. What we're doing here is adding about 96% of the water that we measured out to the flour. Reserve that water, just set it to a side. What we're doing here is we're just mixing that little water that we added to our flour because what we're looking for is the flour to fully hydrate before we add salt and yeast. This recipe yields about three 230 gram dough balls. You want to mix the flour and water as much as you can until you get to this point. Now gather all the escapees and just knead the dough until it all comes together into a smooth dough ball like you see here. Now it is a little tough right now, but the beautiful thing about the auto lease method is a little bit of time will let your dough relax and become really workable. The next step here is to put this dough ball into a bowl, cover it with plastic, let it rest for an hour, let the dough hydrate. An hour later, look at what you have here. Fully rested dough and look at how soft and relaxed the gluten is. No spring back whatsoever. Now do not add flour onto a work surface. It will ruin the percentage that we have measured out so far. Just gently spread out your pizza dough and this is where we're gonna add salt. Now, if you're using coarse sea salt, it's very important that you break up the salt into smaller chunks by either using a spice grinder or a mortar and pestle. It's gonna help your salt dissolve into the dough. And all I'm doing now is just encasing the salt into the dough and just kneading it. You will feel the little crunchy grains of salt, but just keep kneading it until you don't feel it anymore. Then you're done for right now. Let this dough rest for another 20 minutes before we go and combine our yeast and water into our dough. And as you can see here, with minimal kneading, our gluten is very strong. It passed the window pane test method. And all you gotta do now is take the remaining water that we measured out, add your yeast and mix it together. Now this next step of the auto lease method is going to be the most difficult one, but only because it's messy, right? So now we're adding the rest of the water and our yeast. And what's going to happen here is the dough is going to feel like it's splitting apart. And if you've ever made fresh mozzarella or pulled fresh mozzarella, this is what it feels like. But do not worry, just keep stretching and pulling the dough just like I'm doing. And it's going to slowly start to come together as you can see here. Again, do not add any flour. The, the measurements are precise and it has to be this way. All you have to do is keep picking up, slapping and folding it just like how I'm doing. Your hands are gonna be sticky a little bit, but just keep working the dough until it becomes nice and smooth. Now cover it up and let this rest in your refrigerator for 24 hours. Your dough is gonna develop really good flavor. Now let's work on the sauce. One of the characteristics of New Haven Abits is the fresh uncooked tomato sauce. Now here I'm using some high quality San Marzano tomatoes, which I'm going to run through a food mill just to grind it all up. Then give your food mill a nice tap and then scrape the bottom to make sure you get all of the tomato flesh into your sauce. Now for the abits, all you need in your sauce is a little bit of salt and oregano. Now just don't sprinkle the oregano into the sauce, put it in the palm of your hand and grind it, crush it up. You wanna release all the oils, that way you get a lot more oregano flavor. It's just smart cooking. You always wanna maximize all the flavors that you put in every single one of your dishes. And we have a beautiful tomato sauce. The only thing left we have to do is just give it a taste for salt. Now, at least two hours before cooking your pizza, what I did with the dough ball that was fermenting for 24 hours is I took it out and I portioned it into 230 gram dough balls, let it rest at room temp for at least two hours before you start kneading it. It will make the dough a lot easier to handle. Now my flour bath is about two parts semolina and one part bread flour. And you gotta make sure that the dough ball is completely covered and dry in flour. And now all the videos that I've seen on New Haven style at Beats is you wanna start from the edges and press all the air out working in the middle. Make sure that you push all the air out because we're not looking for a puffy crust. And I like to give my dough a little bit of encouragement by hand stretching it. And as you can see, 
the gluten is very strong in this dough. So it's gonna make for a really awesome pie. Now I dust my peel and I slide my dough onto it. And this is when I'm going to start dressing my uh, beets. Now it's time to dress our pizza. Now with the tomato pie, all we're having on it is sauce, Pecorino Romano, and olive oil. I think Sally's up in New Haven likes to finger paint their sauce onto their pie, which is cool, but it's too messy for me. All right, so once we dress our pizza, it's time to go launch it into our pizza oven. Now the floor of my pizza oven is about 724 degrees. I'm just gonna launch this thing in here. It's gonna take me about four to five minutes to cook this pie. Just take a look at it. It's looking pretty sexy right now. And all I'm gonna do is gonna lower my heat as low as it will go because I want the undercarriage to become nice and crispy. After about two minutes or so, I'm gonna heat up my pizza peel and it's time to turn the pizza. And with the flame turned down, it really lets the undercarriage cook and set and become nice and crispy. I'm gonna turn this pizza around and let the other side have its time close to the flame. And just take a look at what we got going on here. Got some nice char developing already. The sauce and the cheese is nice and bubbly. The undercarriage I know is cooking just beautifully. And I'm gonna crank up the heat just so I can get a little bit more char. Now, if you want more char in your pizza, go ahead, create more char. If you want less, obviously cook it for less. And right here, after about five minutes, it's done. I always put my pizzas onto a wire rack just so the steam on the bottom doesn't sog up the crust. And as you can see here, beautiful char, beautiful bright red tomato sauce, smelling, looking lovely. Let's go inside and eat this. All right, guys, so this is my attempt at a New Haven style of beets, as they would say. I'm doing a tomato pie, which is just sauce and some pecorino and olive oil, which is the classic I'm sorry, my OCD won't let me cut into the uh, weird odd shape. So this is the only weird piece that I will allow myself to cut. That's not like the other pieces like so. All right, so here you go. If you look right here, bright red tomato sauce, cheese is cooked in, the undercarriage got some nice leoparding, some other pieces as well. Beautiful, nice, thin, all right. No flop. I try not to cook my pizzas and allow flop on my pizzas. I don't know if it's a New Haven thing for it to be floppy, but if it is and this offends you, then I guess we just have to cook pizzas differently. But here is my version of a New Haven inspired pizza or a beats. Here you go, going in. Mmm, really nice, clean flavors. Crispy crust, just good quality tomatoes. You can definitely taste it. A little bit of the oregano. A little bit of the char you can, that comes through. Mmm, a beats. Great. I'm planning on a trip in the spring to come up to New Haven to check out all your pizza spots. So if you guys have any recommendations outside of like, you know, the big name ones, which I will be going to as well, but outside of like Pepe's, Modern, Sally's, uh, Zupardi's, things like that. Um, let me know what other local places I should check out. I would really love to get um, more in-depth in-person knowledge of what makes a beats amazing. Mm, it's so good. I've joined a couple Facebook groups with people that are from New Haven and up in that area and New Haven a beats uh, enthusiasts. And I just want to say huge thank you to everyone that's given me like their advice and their knowledge and just taking the time to speak to me. The last couple days I've been asking a lot of questions online um, because I really want to try this um, style of pie pizza um, before I go up there, you know, and this is a really exciting preview of what's to come. And hopefully I can meet some of you guys for some uh, beats when I go up to 
uh, New Haven. So I'll let you guys know in the future about when I'm going up there. And so if you can, would love to meet you guys and sit down and listen to your stories about why you love the places that you love. And I want to learn the history of it. And I think it would be very awesome thing to do. I mean, I'm always on a quest for knowledge and especially if it's about food, I'm all for it. Guys, thank you so much for joining. I love this. I love making content for you guys. If you guys could do me a huge favor and just click the like button down below. Give me a like, give me a follow, hit the notification bell. I really appreciate it. Take care of yourselves. And as always, peace.